There are long traditions in psychology of working with film, not just on film. And uh, there tends to be an erasure of those traditions. We think it's just a, a recent entity because in academia we have to say we are the ones inventing something new. But actually, going back as the 1940s, 50s, there's a very rich tradition of working with films. And um, I'm only going to talk about two aspects in which I've worked with films. I've actually worked with film in many ways, so I have five minutes. It's actually the hardest talk to give, actually. I've written it down, but I'm probably still not going to stick to it. Um, so the two aspects are film as participative methods. In other words, how does one use film as a way of including our participants in our research so that they actually make the film with you? And there are different relationships one can foster to use film as participative methods. So that's going to be the first aspect I'm going to quickly speak about. And the second aspect is film as social scene. And I'll explain that when I move on to it. Um, let me begin with participative. Some of you may know uh, Martin Parr's work. He's a well-known photographer. And uh, he's especially famous for photographing British seasides, uh, particularly working class lives. There's quite a lot of debate about whether he's respecting them or he's laughing at or with these uh, people at British seasides. I'm not really so much interested in that, but how other groups of people that are part of the British landscape, how their seaside experiences hardly ever feature in Martin Parr's images. Um, now, this is a still from a film called Arj Gal, Today and Yesterday. It was made in 1990 by uh, Avtar Bra, who's a well-known academic on diaspora studies, and a researcher, Jasbir Panisa. Uh, they worked with a film trainer called Vipin Kumar, and they taught uh, elderly women, actually, in an Asian elderly day centre in Southall, in West London, to script and shoot film. This took six weeks, this process. And it really is deep participative methods. It's not go in, shoot, here's your camera, let me go, take my story and write this up. In fact, they never wrote it up. They were just interested in it, in it as a community educational initiative. Um, and they created two films. One of them was Arj Gal, Today or Yesterday, so that this first still you saw is from that film. And um, it's so interesting when we write histories of our discipline, that how we forget some of these smaller initiatives because people haven't promoted themselves. So that's why I wanted to just put this in, in the curriculum, if you so to speak. <coughs> Normally it's people like Latour who are recognised as doing visual or artistic sociology. But this was something that I thought that is really uh, innovative and something for us to learn from. Now the second way in which I use film, uh, sorry, this is a still from that film where they end with a quite a risque dance, the women. Um, the second way to think of films is to think of films as... Um, social scenes rather than film scenes. There's an overwhelming um, scholarship on what happens in films. From many directions, films are digested. But what isn't usually so common is paying attention to the social scenes that are created in the very cinemas itself. So these scenes are interesting methodologically for sociologists because they provide a viewfinder, a viewfinder like a camera itself on the very fabric of urban life. And um, being viewfinders, they help us to think about how urban life is put together. If you look at the social scenes in cinemas. Now Roland Barthes noted this in terms of what we do with our bodies when we occupy cinema spaces. He talks about the postures of the spectators in the darkness, often with their legs and coats draped over the seat in front of them, their bodies sliding down as if they were in bed. 
In my research, I've paid close attention to these meeting places. Um, and um, I've looked at seats, foyers, entrances, the wider social interaction that happens, not only between film and people, but between people themselves and architecture. And by paying attention to these rich meeting places, you can actually look at the dynamic ways in which cities are made and invented or reinvented by newer groups when they arrive in places that they're not expected to be in. Um, now, I've done this by making three films. I didn't set out to make three films. It just started with one film, collaboratively, on the social scenes that were generated when this cinema, uh, in, from Coventry, once it was called The Ritz in the 70s and 60s, it's now been empty for 20 years. Uh, but it was a very dynamic uh, place in the post-war period where South Asian people made the city theirs. Amidst a cold, racist climate, they dressed in their best, sang, ate, and met each other in these cinemas. And they existed all over the UK. I've looked at Coventry in detail, but they existed from King's Cross to Glasgow this huge network of cinemas, many of them independently run, some owned by collectives uh, of groups. And these uh, social scenes did not simply, as I said, involve seeing films. They also have held political meetings in them, organised dance performances, talks with famous actors, and they even held wrestling matches in them. Um, and some of the films, this one, you can watch online uh, by going on YouTube. So I think I'm done. <laughs> Thank you.